welcome to episode number 18, 24th of July. So once again, we are live from Flinders Street, Hearns Hobbies in That's Melbourne. Right. Melbourne, Australia. So let's give it a few minutes so a few people join us live. So... Yeah. The week gone by pretty quick, hasn't this it? This week was, uh, yeah, definitely very hectic. I think on Monday we turned up here with, I don't know how many online orders, probably five times more than normal. Yeah, there were a lot. And uh, I think we are slowly catching up. Yes. So we've all been quite busy doing uh, dispatching, packing and so forth. So different week. Yeah, very which is a good week. thing. I mean, it's a lot of support from everyone. Absolutely. Yes. So, okay, we see a few, few coming, coming online. Tony, Captain S-Man. Okay, we've got a few people online. So yeah, different week. So um, today we have received also lots of stock. So lots of new stuff to look lots at. Lots of new stuff to look at. So I don't think we're going to do the news section today. We're just going to look at quite a few new products. And for a start, uh, we're going to talk briefly about the Gundam competition that finished last week. Yeah, that's right. So last week um, we had the Mecha competition that we um, organized. So it ran for two weeks. Yes. Um, it had a slow start, but at the end, a lot of entries in the last couple of hours. Correct. I think yeah. we went from 5 to 25 in, in a matter of hours. That's right. Which is so exciting. It's, it's one of the biggest events, I think, for Good. that many uh, entries. Um, but because of the last week being so busy, we've been held up um, with our, our judging. judging. So we're going to try and finish all our judging today and finalize it. And hopefully we'll have the results out um, uh, this evening. Yes. So in the next few days, we'll have the results out and all the yeah. scores by early next week. Yes. So we've got couple of new people on board this week as well which is excellent yes so that can help us to do uh, all the online dispatching yeah and so we'll have a bit more time to go back into the competition so maybe yes. next week we can announce another one we will see yeah. we'll first finish up this one and then decide what to do for the <laughs> yeah, next sure. one so yes if anyone has any ideas on what the next competition could be just uh, drop us a comment and then we can go from there yeah for sure in the meantime we have the usual car at the front here what is this what is this this just arrived brand new this week, so let's start the guessing game. That's it. Very good. So, uh, lots of new arrivals today. Should we start from the Gundams? We can I start guess. with Gundams. So yeah, since we talk about the Gundam competitions. Yep. So we've got a few Gundams here. So there's a little small selection. Um, we got uh, let's say look first. We got the restock of the uh, the Barbatos. So let's bring here. Yep. So this came out a few months ago, but a, a much anticipated uh, release. Uh, first in the MG range, so it's got a lot of bits, yep. uh, very poseable, and hasn't been around for a little bit, but more stock. So we've got plenty of these, if you're interested. So Barb Toss, and then, let's just pop this one down here. And then, let's see, we've got uh, some new Sakura Wars suits. So Sakura Wars, these are from the, uh, the game. So it's a computer game set in a time of, um, it's like steampunk. So right. they're steam powered, they've got the big steam engines on the back. And then it's got this samurai style armor and they use samurai swords. Yeah. And they've got a little bit of a Mac feel to them as well because you open them up and there's a dude inside, inside. all the girls. Right. So these are the newer versions. So it looks like the steampunk theme is coming back quite strong because quite a few manufacturer, even Hornby, they're making yes. a steampunk uh, railway system yep. with different carriages, different locomotives and, and some buildings. So yes. definitely something uh, that is coming up new. Actually, well, steampunk is quite, um, quite interesting, I think. You can see here a bit more in detail from the side side of the box. You can see the, the girl on this one is a guy on that one. Is that correct? Yep, that's right. So you've got a guy on this one here. Let's see if you can see it properly here. That's yep. the guy here. So it's essentially the same model with, with a minor difference. Yeah, so these are a little bit different to the earlier ones that have been released. They're a bit chunkier in their overall design because the original ones were more rounded. Um, but apart from that, yeah, very similar type of build. Very yes. interesting. Good. Okay. okay so, so that's Sakura Wars, and then this is pretty interesting. This is quite nice actually. Okay, so this is the Beyond Global limited set because it's uh, Gundam's 40th anniversary this year. So they've been releasing quite a few different limited edition, yes, different things for the year, and this one is going to be very popular indeed. Okay, so very I'm nice. Just, this is an RX78-2, uh, um, which is one of the more popular Classic. shapes. Yes, yes, yes. yes. With the traditional red and blue and white kind of colors. Yes, that's right. Very, very nice. So that's high grade. And then we'll move on to Evangelion. So my Evangelion. Favorite. Yes. My favorite of today. All right, so you get your two versions there of the, yes. uh, the double zero. And then you've got your um, uh, the LM HG version as well. Okay, so this this one here is a more basic type of build. Right. Um, but it's in the uh, newer, newer style um, colors and shape. Yep. 
So that's sort of been around a little bit, but it's been updated. And then these are the brand new RG series. So RG meaning they've got more joints. More joints, yes. Yep. And this is the double zero version. So we had a different uh, version before with different colors. Is that's that correct? Right. So yeah. it was a more, uh, more common purple, purple type one. Purple, yep, green. Yeah, Similar one. to that, effectively. Yes, that's right. Yeah. So is this the same kit again with different coloring or is this uh, any difference? Well, the head's totally different shape. Totally different shape. Yep. Okay. So with these in the, um, in I, I guess a series, they made different prototypes. Right. So, and then they eventually made a production version. Right. So each one was slightly different. So zero, zero, one, the two. Yeah. Okay, so let's see if we can jump quickly on the side here. So that's so, how this one looks like. So the two kits are essentially the same, um, except that the bigger box includes the, um, the mobile cannon that was plugged up to the uh, the, the Tokyo power plant. power plant to get all its power. So you imagine that the flickering lights just so you can destroy the enemy. There you go. But it's very impressive. That's a massive cannon. And yeah. So yeah, so you can get it as um, just a figure by itself, or you can get it as oh, a combo with a combo, with yeah. cannon. Yeah. There you go. So very good from. But no, so quite a few yes. releases, and we also received a large restock as well this week. Which yeah, we is, did. Which is nice. Yes, so the shelves are full. It was uh, long overdue. We yes. didn't receive much for the last couple of weeks. So yep. that's really good. Yes. We received some Revolt stuff, something in a slightly different topic now. Yeah, we did. So we like a, a, a ship and a plane. Okay, so we've got the HMS Invincible, which became famous during the Falklands War. Yeah. So Falklands War, I guess, is one of those... Uh, uh, I guess sort of modern conflicts yes. that gained everyone's attention because there were two fairly big powers. I mean, you had the the English, which people thought were diminishing in their world power, and then Argentina, which um, wanted to claim uh, these small yes. islands. Yes. And so England sent out um, all their forces, and the Invincible used the um, the Harrier jet. So this is the first right. time the Harriers were actually in conflict. Right. And they proved to be very effective. So that's the Invincible, which is very famous from the conflict. Here we go. So it comes with the, um, whoops, sorry, comes with the Harriers, and it's got some Seeking helicopters, yeah, and also a Lynx helicopter, I think. Let's see. You got a bit more detail here. So you got your helicopters here and the Harrier. Yes. Yeah. So it. it's interesting looking at the flight decks. So this is one of the earlier ships would uh, had that um, uh, ski jump type. Yes. So the Harriers could. Um, take off from standstill and right. just hover up. But there was much more efficient and less um, uh, fuel usage if you launched off that um, the, the, the ramp. Yeah. Wow. Here we go. So this is a one so to 700 scale by Revell. Yes. And it'll be about 30 centimeter long to put in perspective. So yes. But this long when it's yeah, finished. Yeah, it's a decent, decent it's size. A good size little, little ship. Yes. Good. Yeah. Okay. All and right. then of course you've got this one here, which is the Iron Maiden. Um, Aces High Speedy. So it comes with um, the, the two figures of Eddie yes. here. So you've got Eddie in a standing position, yes. always in a seated pilot S position too. Two options. Yeah. So that's uh, another so one in 130 second scale actually. So that's so a bigger yes, again. Big good, good size, good yes. size plane actually. And very limited. So there's not many of these left. So make sure you jump on these. Absolutely. Yep. They only do one production. Yes. So let's see how the car gassing is going. Okay, so there's a few. There's a. Oh. Alright, let's change right, angle. Someone, some, someone picked it already here by the look of it. There you go, let's change the angle. Devin. Obviously. Oh, really? Hi, Devin. Good to see you there. Tony all right, all right. is picking a Ford. Yeah. <laughs> so Devin got it. Let's see if there's anyone else that can, not reading the messages can, uh, can guess it right. Let's see if uh, Devin can pick up the actual name of the color. Oh, yes. Next yes. step, this next is, level. That's a very special color, apparently. So, moving forward. Okay. Uh, oh, Yakumo. More new yeah, stuff. Well, that's pretty exciting. Release from Yakumo this week. So I've um, got some Yakumo just up here. Up here. Yep. Let's see if anyone can tell us which one, which one of the four are new. So it was very long-awaited release of one particular of these four cars. It's been a long time coming. Absolutely. So yeah. uh, over twelve months we're waiting for this new car. So it was a four. Uh, it's just arrived finally this week. And we so talked about this it. is the number two version of the SF. SF, yep. yes. So was it four was originally released, I think about four years ago, and was a belt driven. So Yakumo went from a BMAX platform to yep. the was it four, and they introduced the belt driven uh, in the off-road. Again, which was an old concept, I believe. Yes. 
Uh, and then with the SF, they went back to a shaft drive. shaft drive yes. kind of car, which proven to be a bit more efficient. Uh, and so that's the SF2, so it's a, an updated version, yes. which is a bit lighter uh, than the previous one and quite a few tweaks actually. It's, uh, looks quite similar but it's actually very different indeed yeah so i guess the original design was very well engineered to begin with absolutely and it just needed a few um, refinements yeah to make yes. it an, a, a much better car yes. I and mean, it was already a great car because it won a world championship didn't it they did yeah. yes yes they did uh won a world championship with this one and the dtm i think was a two at a time so, yeah which is the two drive version of this one here yeah so so Yokomo, so what's it about Yokomo? Yokomo is very much a competition orientated brand. Absolutely. Been around for a very long time and have always tried to produce cars that win world championships. Yes. And indeed. they've won quite a number of them. In off-road and on-road as well. Yeah. So they're very strong in on-road as well. So with a BD10, which I think we presented a couple of weeks back, yes. uh, they're quite strong on that. So should we have a look quickly inside this box? We should. Yep. That's Simon's car actually, this one. Is it? Simon's oh, watching oh, us, okay. so we're opening your car, Simon. Thank you All for right. that. We'll take care. Do we actually have a knife? Oh, we no. have a knife. I can find a knife. <laughs> okay. So maybe able to open it. All right. We won't cut your seal, Simon. Also, there you go. While you're doing that, we've also had a few more guesses on the, the front car here. Cortina 440, not quite, Simon. Close. Rolls. Nick. Hi, Nick. Super. Ford Cortina Super Two Door Saloon. Looks like you don't need this anymore. No, I don't need it anymore. <laughs> no. <laughs> Not quite. We're not quite there with the number, but it's definitely Ford Cortina. I think we all agree on that. Ford Cortina. So we need to guess the color and, and the, the model. model. Uh, okay. Right, so let's change angle again. Eh? Let's move to the side camera here. So we just have a look at uh, what's in here. Oh, you can see it has jam packed. So the boxes look small, but they're jam packed yes. full of bits. So that's again a, a kit for those who don't know what a race kit looks like. They come un unassembled, and yep. there's quite a bit of uh, building to do. Um, Starting from this one, you've got the front and rear shock tower with a, with a wing mount here. So they're all in bags, so yeah. then you can follow the instructions and the instruction will give you the bag number that you need to use for that specific step. Yep. Uh, this bag here, you will have uh, the center zipper clutch. It's got a lot of transmission bits, doesn't it? Transmission, so you've got the differentials in here. Yep. And the differential cases. Uh, let's see if you can see them here. Across so these here. are gear differentials that they give you? Uh, front and rear differ gear differentials, and yep. for the center is a zipper touch. Right, okay. But yep. you can then upgrade to a gear diff, right. which if you race in modified class, you're probably going to need a gear differential yep. in the center. Yep. Uh, moving to the next bag, so here you've got the suspension, so you see your springs here, and all the different uh, the front arms. The front arms have been updated, that was right. a big update, because yep. the, the previous model, the front arms were a little bit weak, right. and they, they had problem with breakages, so the, oh, the arms are, are definitely brand new and, and beefier. Okay. You can see the hubs here. I got the front shock, and rear hubs and shock the shocks. Cylinders. The shock bodies here. Let's see. Yep. There we go. So hopefully you can see them in here. Maybe sort of bronzy gold. Uh, they give you some oils. Uh, most racers will probably tend to use their own oils, but this gives you the opportunity of building the car if you don't have anything else on end. Yep. The body. Now the body is, I believe, from J Concept. It's a lightweight body, really thin. Um, it's got this green color because the covering film uh, to protect from the overspray is, yep, yep. is of this greenish greenish color. So you just peel it off. After you peel it off after that. Yep. Yes. Um, and here are the all connectors. Uh, all connectors. Yes. They're beefy. They are quite beefy. Yes. I think about it was probably last year they move the size up again. I think the ball are uh, five millimeter roughly now. Right, okay. Yep. Now you have sway bars in here. Yep and the pillows for uh, the suspension holders. These are to adjust your uh, toe-in and toe-out and anti-squat and different different angle, different geometry of the car. I find that really um, clever because it's yes. a, for me, it's a, it's a reasonably new design. So in the past, you use different blocks, I guess, with different spacing yes. to adjust your, your angles on your suspension. Yeah. But now you can actually just change a pocket, pocket which changes right. the angles. Correct, so these are your suspension blocks here let's see if you can see them yep so you see that sort of square shape the square shape they've got a bit of a hole here square hole and then you can put these different pillows here which which then allow you to change the orientation of the uh, the suspension of um, the suspension pins here. yeah the inch pins here yeah you go. it's really interesting so you can change the uh, the toe the anti-squat anti-squat that's yep. right 
So that's the rear end here. So you got the rear uh, suspension arms, which are quite beefy once again. They look quite long, don't they? Yeah, they do look quite long. And the hubs as well. These are plastic. I believe there will be an upgraded version in metal. And also the hubs have an interesting feature. So, so you can put some inserts in here. Hopefully you can see. To again adjust, I think, is the, the positioning, the height of the hub. So you can move oh, it yes, up yes. or down right, uh, okay. in a similar way. Yes. Uh, it's probably a bit hard to see here, but the hub has got that ability of doing yep. it. Uh, almost at the end, it's got your side guards here, mud guards, and yep. the center bracing, which is this T-shaped plastic part here with a carbon covering uh, to stiffen the chassis. Yep. Uh, finally, the metal aluminum chassis, hard anodized chassis. Yep. Quite like the way that some of the cars have gone into an aluminium type chassis. They've, yes. They've followed um, a 1A scale buggy type design because I guess with the onset of um, fast motors and high performance, yes. the chassis are copying more of a beating. So in the past, these be carbon fiber Most for stiffness, but they just used to wear out very quickly. Absolutely. So that's it for the new WZ4. Hopefully, we're going to see some uh, build pictures in the next uh, in the next few days. Yep. Uh, we're sending out the cars hopefully tonight. To those that have pre-ordered one, yes, so we can park this one now. If you see, yeah, I think you guys might have a winner in the chat. Oh, <laughs> What's that? oh, Nick. oh yeah, Nick, well done, Nick. So, yes, it is the Ford Cortina 500 uh, GT Red 7. What exactly? Yeah, 100%. Oh, uh, we have to give you some virtual points there. I think so. Yep, I think I'll so. give you 100 virtual points. All right, we're gonna have a look at that one later. So, um, that's what it was there for. So as we said, there is a, was it for a four-wheel drive? Was yes. it two, a two-wheel drive option? So similar concept, but yep. two-wheel drive. So rear-wheel drive. And that one's got the mid-mounted. And that's a, yes. Yes. Pretty much, yeah. Okay. Now, moving briefly on the drift side of things. So Yakuma is really famous for drifting. So you can drift RC cars as well. And the YD2 is uh, the, one of the top of the range um, drifting platform. Yes. The two-wheel drive and rear-wheel drive as well. So Yokomo started a long time ago trying to understand the dynamics of drift chassis. So they um, they licensed um, into the uh, what do they call it again the J Japanese D I can't remember now. It's on the tip of my tongue. But there's a uh, a circuit of real drift racing. Yes. And they um, uh, licensed a lot of the bodies. Yes. And they went through a lot of those events and these have drifting competitions at those events. And so they've carefully looked at how the the drift cars work and they've used all those dynamics into these chassis. Right. And these chassis are actually very, very different to your normal touring car so. chassis. Very much so. So they've got a lot of wheel lock. Yeah, absolutely. And, and, and the way they move, they put a, the weight distribution is yes. very different. So yes. in this case, we have a what the two platform, which is uh, the rear wheel drive platform. But the main difference is having a rear mounted motor. So let's see if we can go on this side camera here. Yeah, it's probably going to be easy so to see. So that's the rear wheel drive, uh, sorry, rear mounted motor which is effectively behind the rear wheels yes uh, and this one here which is a brand new release it's called yep. SX3 is actually more of a kind of a what we can call a mid mount type yes. motor where the motor is actually in front of the rear wheels yes. as you can see on this side so I guess here. you can replicate real type cars so this this one with the rear hanging yes. Let's see if you can the motor see. is very much like a, a Porsche 911 type yes that's right yeah so it's hanging over the back axles and this one's in front of the rear axles. So, yeah. And and then they do have a number of different gearboxes as well to right. to change the height and the position of the motor. So across the YD2 range, they yep. have uh, quite a few different type of gearboxes. So this is a top of the range. So there's a limited edition yes. with red anodizing. Yes. Uh, there'll be a normal edition coming too with black anodizing. Yep. And then this is a mid-range type car still with a carbon chassis yep and then there is more of an entry level which will have a, a more traditional kind of plastic tub chassis yep. as well so and that's for the yd2 drift range yeah it's uh, uh very very nice yeah they're very premium and Indeed. i mean if you've never driven a purpose-built drift car it's chalk and cheese you can try to make a touring car into a yes. drift car yes. with slippery tires on it just Completely doesn't work different. the same once very you get different. one of these handling it'll actually be able to control the drift around multiple corners no problem absolutely there you go. Very good. Here we go. Okay, so, so that is. Yep. Okay, so uh, 
Next, well, today's going to be a lot of RC by the look of it. Yeah, okay. We also receive a, I think it's a bit of a restock of a, a quite new release radio from Futaba. Ah, oh, yes. So uh, I don't think we talk about radio very much yet in the in the live. So this is a top of range Futaba radio for RC for RC cars. Yes. So let's do a quick unboxing. Okay, let's go for it. So, so you might notice that a lot of um, car radios are in the pistol grip type arrangement these days. I mean, when in the 80s, all the cars used to generally have a stick type radio, and a wheel radio was the upgrade. So the idea of upgrading to a wheel radio is because you're using your index finger for controlling the throttle, so you got a little bit more control there. Yes. And then you've got a steering wheel for adjusting steering. And pretty much now, the standard for surface type vehicles is to go for a pistol grip type pistol radio. Pistol grip type, absolutely. So, here we go. This is the top of the range by Futaba. It's a yes. Japanese made uh, radio. Yes. So, here we go. So I guess all the top end radios are computerized now. They are very computerized, yes. This one's also a touch screen. Uh, these, I'm not sure if this is touch screen actually, but it, it, it probably is actually touch screen. Yep. There we go. So, so they do come with two receivers, which is yep. actually a, a, a bonus. Yes. Uh, there is the opportunity of um, the steering wheel drop the down. The drop down, but I think this is for potentially putting it at the back as well. So you can, if you're left-handed, you want to have your um, radio at the back. And this is definitely oh, okay. drop so down. So you got you got the drop down and the angle change. And the angle. Ah, that's right. Yes. Okay. So you can there change you the angle of the wheel depending on how your um, your hand fits onto it. That's right. Yep. You can drop it down, and again, you can install the radio, the wheel at the back. So if you're left-handed, uh, you want to drive it. A speed wheel as well. Side, yes. Is it a different diameter? It is a different, uh, a diameter. different diameter. Wow. Okay, so a different diameter steering wheel is a bit different, but that'll allow you to change how sensitive the movement is. Yes. Yeah. So obviously a smaller wheel is going to react faster. Absolutely. And a large wheel reacts slower. That's a getting a tuning a tuning aid. Yes. So let's have a look at this one here. So that's this your controller here. Can we move to this one here? So the seven on this model means it's got seven channels, right? Uh, it should be. Uh, not sure about the seven channel, actually. It should be a seven channel, yes. So we power this on. There we go, it's got audio. Oh, that's a bit special, isn't it? And it's a fully color screen. Looks like, is, is this Android powered? Maybe. No, I don't think, I think it's the, I don't know if it's uh, Android power. It's probably the proprietary software. It's definitely touch screen, yep. you can see here. Okay. Got all your menus. There you go. Okay, so I guess the, the most basic functions of a radio would be two channels, because one channel is your throttle and the other channel is your steering. And then occasionally you use your other channels for um, controlling uh, other items, other such items, as changing yeah. gears or yes. uh, additional brakes, depending on the model you have. If it's rock rolling, you sometimes you have uh, mixed steering. You oh, can yes, have gears, you can have diff locks. Yep. Um, if you have trucks, perhaps, you can have lights, you yes. can have sound. Uh, there's quite a few different things changing you can gears. do. Changing gears again. Yeah. So these are fully adjustable. So one interesting aspect of this is you can adjust the tensioning of the spring of your trigger. Oh so yeah. Some people like a, a softer, softer trigger. Yep. Yeah, absolutely. And you can also change uh, the trigger itself uh, to make it more suitable to the size of your finger. Oh, okay. Uh, so you've got a, a thicker finger to a thinner finger. Uh, mm. I think, yes, that's right. So here they give you a quick. They give you a few different size uh, triggers oh, that I see. you can simply replace by undoing this little grab screw in here and then yep. this front part will come out yep. and you have a different diameter kind of yep. uh, arch here so yes. based on the size of your finger you, yes. you, you can be quite uh, well that's very important I guess control. with competition type use because you want it to be absolutely, um, absolutely ergonomic to your hand absolutely yes so you can see all the different channel buttons here so you, when you're driving you can actually control different function without moving your fingers from the radio whoops yep. there's a timer function as well that you can activate i think from one of these buttons yes in general it's all very programmable yes so so this is a futaba 7 pxr which is the latest and greatest yeah that's come with a battery and two receivers yeah and a charger as well so could you charge oh, it charge as well, as well. that's yeah. very handy so it's a lifey battery okay and you've got a charger included okay very good so i think just hit there there we go. So I like to compare this one to the somewhat M17. Yeah, so they're on the same level. So they're both on top end uh, uh, competition use controllers. Yes. yes. You can see similar shape. Yes. 
but they're actually quite different once you when when, when you hold them they, they feel considerably different so well i guess it's a balance which it is be different too right they, oh, wow. they have become a lot lighter these days they have so compared to what they used to be you know three or four years ago five years ago they're a lot heavier now they're way more balanced and lighter yeah because the radios used to feel top heavy absolutely but these feel really good so because the radio was top heavy they had a heavy battery as well to compensate often yes. for that yes. but now is everything becoming lighter so the battery can be even lighter as well so yep. you put light lipo or battery 3.7 volts 7.4 volts so a bit yes. smaller than what they used to be and therefore you get much more compact radio so if you're doing a long race often they're or definitely like a one hour final one hour finals yeah that can become really heavy oh definitely so something like that is yes. uh it's definitely a, a, a an improvement now they all feel different in my personal liking the, the someone has a trigger that i like better so this is one of my radius and, and and i like the feel of the trigger better yes than the futaba but i was actually noticing now that this one has a much improved feel on the trigger it feels right. way steeper than it used to be so then again everyone has their own preference well that's it so it's important to just have a feel of them because you need a comfortable radio. I mean, both will be comfortable, but one will be more comfortable than Absolutely. the other for each individual person. Yes, yes, exactly. So, let's. Uh, this one is also has a. Let's see if there is any battery on this one. Turn this on. It does have. Again, it's a. A color screen, different interface. Yep. Uh, this this side panel is a touch screen panel, but the screen itself is not touch screen in this case. Which uh, which is fine. It's just a matter of getting used uh, to go through the menu. Yep. You've got a couple of buttons here as well. Yep. And the buttons are also here. So you got physical buttons and yes. also digital buttons. There we go. And here you can see the difference between the two. Yeah. You can definitely tell the build quality of these. Absolutely. So they're very well molded. Um, overall finish of everything is very clean. Uh, the Fitab ones. A little bit more blingy because it's got some carbon fiber finish on it which you might see around the yes. edges for some trim yes. so either way they're both very good radio it's very good radio so here is what a about an 800 to a thousand dollar radio is looking like yes now yes. each of these manufacturers do produce lower end radios as well a bit more uh, yeah. entry level less features but the feel often is quite similar they are quite uh quite good as well so yeah many different options are there so let's see in the meantime if anyone has any questions here. Uh, let's see. Uh, Simon Healing is talking about the timer, I think. The timer works off the silver button on the, uh, on the bottom to tap on your body. Ah, uh, that's oh, it. Okay. Uh, okay, thank you, Simon. I know you're using one of those. I think you may should upgrade, upgrade to this one, perhaps. That's but it. that's the timer button here. Oh, okay. Because you can obviously tap it on your body like this as you as you go. So you start oh, right. and stop. That's really good. There you go. And here we go. We've got some music as well. Yes. And we've also got Payne who said he can't he couldn't stick around but his order arrived this morning. So very good. He, he was very happy with it. Oh good. All right. Excellent. Thank you for the feedback. Excellent. So let's park the radius. Yes. Okay. Uh, is anyone have any question on radius? Let us know. In the meantime we move to the next topic for today. So the car today was an easy, an easy one. Oh, I didn't think it was easy, but obviously it was easy for everyone else. I had to read the box. I had to admit that. <laughs> there we go. Let's put this one back here. So I think we should move on to the Subaru Brat. Oh, the Brat, yes. The good old Brat. So I think today's going to be a full RC episode, actually, by the yes. look of it. So what do you know, BJ, about this one? Subaru. It's a Subaru. Yeah. Is it? It is. Yep. It says on the box. <laughs> I don't know if I mentioned it before when they first came in. Does anyone know what chassis this is? Yes. On, like Tamiya chassis. You wouldn't expect that actually. I've got a feeling I've already asked this one, but Let's just see. in case no one watched it last time. So it's a very classic chassis that has been built onto, with a more realistic body. Maybe, yes, Let's no. see. It's a frog. It is a frog. It is a frog. It's a Rob, frog. It's guessing right. Rob is a collector of these cars. We know him. So let's have a look at what's inside. So yep. this is a limited edition, I believe. Yep. Uh, it does come with two bodies. So this is the blue version. And yes, it comes with two bodies. So, well, you got your wheels here. Okay, look at the wheels. These are the dark gray type wheels. Yes. 
And then we'll get into the bodies because that's an obvious difference. So this one comes with the two bodies here. So we've got a molded blue body yes. in ABS resin. So this one's got all the sharp details on it. You'll see in the tray, it's got all the fine uh, planks and such. Um, and then you'll have clear window sections for the top on the roof. And you've got a polycarbonate version which you can paint up and then beat around. Beat around a bit, yes. Yeah. So that's effectively what makes this a limited edition, having the hard body and the Lexan body. Yes. So which is very, very clever, I think. The two options, yes. Yeah, because the original one only would have had the hard body. Yes. Yep. Okay, so for the hard bodies, you're going to have the clear uh, yeah, windscreen the wind and, and, such. and uh, side, side um, uh, windows, mirrors. Yep. Yep. Yeah, nicely tinted. It's a very Good. light tint. Very nice. So it's yeah. quite obvious. Yes, absolutely. Yep. Then some more accessory for uh, the hard body. So you have the front and the rear bumper. Yep. You got the driver and head the, in there as well. And the driver, yes. Yep. And the driver again. Yep. Does it give a bit more realism? Absolutely. Yep. Okay. So oh, the roll bar. The roll bar here. Should we should we move the side camera? It's probably easier actually to go on this one. There you go. So there's the roll bar with the uh, it's got the wire. It's got the metal Modern inserts, tools. yeah, absolutely. Yes. So yes, we were talking about this last week, which is uh, a nice improvement. So you've got, yes, they've got a metal wire yeah. with, with a molding around it. That's right. So it's going to be much more permanent once you screw it all up together. Yes. That's a chance of it falling off. Absolutely. Okay, so this one. Classic ABS, um, uh, I don't know, do you call it a ladder type chassis? I can't remember what Timmy used to call this. But, but they had a like particular that. catch cry for it. So it all screwed together. It was a semi-monocoque, I think. Oh, hardtail actually. Davin is suggesting classic hardtail chassis. Ah, here we go. Thank you, Davin. There we go. Okay, so that's the gearbox here. Yep, with the uh, the uh, trailing arm suspension at the back. There we go. Okay, so, that's the usual speed controller for those yep. that have been following us. That's a brushed and brushless speed controller and yep also LiPo compatible, yep. so very, very versatile, versatile speed controller, very yep. nice to have it included. The tyres, here we go, a bit more roading, road looking tyres. Yeah, very scale. Very scale, yes. yes, quite nice. So definitely they're narrower and um, uh, probably about the same profile as the uh, the frog type ones. Yes. What else have we got in here? Servo saver. Yep, classic servo saver. And you got your classic front bumper. Classic old school bumper okay which was on you know the frog and uh, the earlier cars as well and then there's usual yep. box of bits here box of screws and things so there's a motor and um, That's uh, pointing in. yep okay so yeah you can see a decent size box okay the motor with suspensions the screws. screws the screw bag and so forth yep and, and then you've got your stickers and your manual yes the stickers a big sticker sheet actually on this one really large oh there's your the antenna so you got an antenna and old school rollover antenna. Antenna, yeah. Yep. So it's wire. And it's a big so you got all those. So you, you could so these are the stickers to put onto the clear body if you want. Yep. Or you can mask that out and leave them clear. Uh, and then you've got all the uh, the, the brat type um, stickers. Yep. Yes. They go on the uh, uh, the columns, yeah. And your lights. Okay, so that's that. And then there's a manual. Usual manual. We, which yeah. we have similar to the one we saw in the previous episode. Yeah, so they always got the same sort of um, formula okay. in designing their manuals. Yeah. They're very easy to follow. The step by step. So that's a Subaru Brat. And that's a latest blue version. Limited edition, yes. Here we go. So that came in a couple of weeks ago. Yes. And we still have a couple of in stock. Both at the... Uh, at Hearns and also at the Harbourman shop. Down in Narra Warren. Okay. While you guys are packing that up, we've got a couple more questions. Oh, yes. yes. So we've got um, JMC on Facebook. He's asking, uh, is there any ETA on the Creighton F6S? Uh, I'll have to check that. We received the Tim Corelli Cronus. Is that Cronus? Cronus? No, is no, is that Cronus? Oh Cronus yeah, all these names. Uh, the equivalent in Tim Corelli. Um, we actually did a review of that car a few months back in, on our YouTube channel, but we just received some of those uh, this week. So you should definitely have a look at that. It's a similar looking car. As for the, uh, was it the armor, did you say? 
Freighton. That, that should be arriving too. There is also a, five, a one fifth scale 8S version of, I think it's called Outcast, that is coming within the next couple of weeks. That would be very interesting. Big one fifth scale 8S. Everyone wants big. Absolutely. So um, if you want to send us a message on Facebook or so, we can look it up in ETA for you and give you, give you some feedback. Yep. Uh, okay. Let's see what else, uh, other questions. Is there anything anyone would like to have a closer look at? I can always run off, like always. Yeah. Just grab something quickly. And okay. There's a really big one from Rob, actually, about a rumor on the grapevine. Oh, oh apparently the 2011 Tamiya Avanti yes. is going to be re-released. Is it? Apparently so. Oh. We haven't heard anything yet, but um, it's a possibility by the look of it. So, who knows? Oh, we'll have to dig around. Absolutely. Go through the web. There'll it's be very, some very spy shop somewhere. Okay, so yes, work is confirmed. There's a Kronos from Team Corali. So oh, excellent. Team Corali has a Kronos, which is the monster truck. Yep. Uh, and there's a Python, I think, is the buggy version against success. Yep. Uh, and uh, I know they've got a couple of other variations. The Shugan is more of a truggy option. Yep. And that's it, really. So, okay. So, last one for today. So, if you have any questions in the meantime, let us know. But we should have a look at his full Cortina. Yeah, let's, let's open it up. Okay. So, here we go. It's very so, shiny. It definitely is very shiny. So, the chrome's really nice too. The, the chrome, chrome is really even. Zuzio very nice. So, this is from a brand called Classic Collectible. It's an Australian uh, company. Specialized in uh, one eighteen scale and I think also one forty three scale. Yes. Uh, diecast models. So I'm impressed with the chrome along the sides because it's very fine. It is. It's not fine. actually paint. It's actually chrome components. So let's see. And seeing that the side Sorry, door guys. opens, I mean the alignment is exceptional. Definitely is. So as you, as BJ is saying, you can actually open the door. So let's see if you can do it without. No, nope. two hands. Nice and tight. Hang on. They are a little bit tight. Here we go. It's all good. Okay. Here we go. So doors are opening. One and two. This one is easier. The window is down on this on the driver's side. And as you can see, there's a huge level of detail on the inside. You have the pedals of the gear stick. I like nice. the red interior. You, nice. you, Oops. you quite often don't see the same color as the exterior. Yes. True, true, true. But they've done it very well because um, the, the tones are all different. As, yeah, as you would think from the real car too, because of the different materials. Different materials. Yeah. There you go. Oh, the so contrasting white wheel. You can open the bonnet here. There you go. Again. Your There's big, a big air filter sticking out. Yeah, good engine detail in there. Here's a GT500, as we said before. And you can open the boot as well. Can you? Yeah, the grill is really fine. It, it looks like it's photo etched. Yes, the gr yeah. Oh wow, yes. Let's see if we can actually. That's super fine grill work. That is. So yeah, so photo which is the best way of doing this. Because the cheaper way would have been just using clear plastic and then yes. printing the chrome onto it. Definitely. But that looks a bit dodgy. This is really well done. This is a very impressive model actually. Is there anything in the boot? Uh, I was trying to put it. It's a bit tight, isn't it? Oh, oh okay. Turn on radio here. Okay. Oh, I can't open it. No? Oh, maybe not. It should be opening. Not sure. Does it open in the other direction, perhaps? No, it shouldn't. That'd be like James Bond style if it opened the other direction. Oh, we'll have to suss that one right. out. It looks we, like it opens. We can open the boot, but uh, there is, there should be openable as well, so. Might be someone in there. Here we go. And that is for these uh, Fort Cortina that just arrived this week from Classic Collectible. That's a 118 scale model. Very well finished again. Really nice. So let's see if there is any more questions, otherwise we're more, almost at the end again today. Really? Wow, yeah. it flies, isn't it? It is, it is. So we'll, uh, we'll be preparing for next week again. So if you have any questions, make sure you pop on our uh, Facebook or Instagram try the week and yep. leave some comments on, on the post and we can make sure to address your question the following week. Yep, crucial about anything at all. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Well, as a personal question myself to you guys, yes. and for anyone else who's new to RC, yes. yep. with radio controllers, can they be used 
on any car or within 2.4 gigahertz range or is it manufacturer specific? Oh, that's a good question. We actually get asked very often this question. Yeah, so I guess with any of the kit type um, ready control cars, it can be used for any brand. Yes. Yeah. As long as you match your receiver yes. to your controller. So that yes. is often brand specific. So yes. you can't cross manufacture with controllers and receivers. Yeah. So theoretically, if you had a toy type car that had its own ready control. Correct. If you pull it all out and you put all the new gear in. Absolutely. It'll, it'll all be work. fine. So it is. definitely is brand specific. So yes. each manufacturer tend to use a specific protocol to communicate between the controller and the receiver. Yes. Which is a proprietary type uh, protocol. Yes. Uh, and everyone has done their own research and development to, to come up with the fastest possible way to communicate between the two parties. Yes. Uh, without any interference. So, so it's very good now. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. So mm. that's a very good question, Matt. Okay, so we're almost at the end. Almost at the end, again. So, Thank you everyone for joining us today. Yes. Was, uh, was a good one. So yeah. let us know in the comments if you want to see anything particular for next week. Otherwise, thank you for watching. Thanks again. Right. See you next All time. Right. Bye-bye.